Hello everyone, welcome to the class on Carbonyl Chemistry Part 2. In Part 1, I have discussed about the structure of Carbonyl group. I have explained the Carbonyl group is sp2 hybridized trigonal planar molecule. Planar means all the atoms will exist on a single plane. In other words, it is a flat molecule. Trigonal means the shape appears to be triangular. Hence, it is known as trigonal. sp2 hybrid means 1s and 2p orbitals will combine to give sp2 hybrid orbitals. After that, I have explained about the shell, subshell and orbital. The nucleus contains protons and neutrons and around the nucleus, electrons will be revolving in a specific path. These specific paths are known as shells or orbits. The inner one is first shell. The outer one is second shell. The outer shell or outer orbit is also known as valency shell. The electrons which are present in this valency shell are known as valency electrons. And then uh, these shells contain specific sub shells. The sub shells are S and P. In each sub shell, like in S sub shell, you have one orbital, whereas in P sub shell, you have three orbitals. In case of D, there are five orbitals. In case of F, there are seven orbitals. Now, after this, I have explained why chemical bonding occurs. When you see briefly, chemical bonding revolves around stability of the molecule. Ste energy is inversely proportional to stability. That means, if a molecule or atom has got high energy, the stability will be low. If energy is low, it will uh, the molecule will have high stability. So, the goal of all atoms and molecules is to have less energy and be stable. This can be explained with the help of a rule called as octet rule. According to this octet rule, octa means 8. If the valency electrons are 8 in number, the complete orbitals are filled with electrons and it is a stable atom or molecule. You have inert gases or noble gases like helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon. All of them are called as inert gases. The reason why they are called as inert is they satisfy this octet rule. The valency shell is completely filled with electrons. Hence, they have less reactivity. They will not participate in reactions. That is the reason why they are called as inert. So, this will give stability to all the atoms and molecules. Now, atoms will participate in chemical bonding to attain this 8 valency shell electrons. Now, again, I have explained this concept with the help of methane molecule. Carbon is known as a tetravalent. Tetra means 4, valent means in valency shell it has got 4 electrons, hence it is known as tetravalent. When you see a typical methane molecule, this 4 of the carbon electrons will participate in covalent bonding with hydrogen electrons. Each bond is formed by sharing of two electrons. One electron from carbon, another electron from hydrogen. Totally around this carbon you have 8 electrons are there. 8 electrons satisfy octet rule, hence this molecule is stable. In case of hydrogen and helium, they have only one S subshell. So, S subshell has got maximum of 2 electrons. Hence, for these two, if 2 electrons are there, they will be stable. Look at this, all the hydrogen has got 2 electrons, hence they are stable. This is the logic behind all chemical bonding. Finally, I have explained about carbonyl group hybridization. When you see these carbonyl groups like carbon and oxygen, both of them involve in sp2 hybridization. If you look at this sp2 hybridized orbitals, the shape will be like this. The bond angle will be 120 degrees. This is a typical carbon atom. Now, sp2, three of the hybrid orbitals will be there. The remaining p orbital remains as such in perpendicular path. Now, oxygen also has got the similar thing. Oxygen will also participate in sp2 hybridization and it will have three hybridized orbitals. Three hybridized orbitals. Now, similar to this carbon, one p orbital will be lying perpendicular to the plane. Now, overlap of this carbon and oxygen sp2 hybrid orbital results in a sigma bond. Whereas, sideways overlap of this unhybrid p orbital results in a pi bond. So, when you see this double bond, one bond is of sigma, another bond is of pi bond. Because of this overlap, good overlap of these orbitals, sigma bond is a stronger bond. Whereas, pi bond is a weak bond because it is only a sideways overlap. Remember this point. Now, this is what I have covered in part 1. 
Now, in this part 2, we will look about polar carbonyl bond, what are electrophiles and nucleophiles, various functional group with carbonyl component and thermodynamic stability of carbonyl component and its advantage or its reactivity and then the whole reactions of carbonyls. Let us start. Now, when you see carbonyl bond, it is known as a polar bond. Polar indicates electric polarity. It means if there is a generation of a positive and negative charge, this considered as polar bond. In a way, it is also known as dipole. Di means two, poles mean two differently charged poles are there. Now, why carbonyl is a polar bond? It is because of differences in electronegativity. Electronegativity means the ability to attract or pull the el electrons toward itself. The higher the value of electronegativity, the higher the ability to pull the electrons. In case of carbon, the electronegativity value is 2.55. Whereas in case of oxygen, it is 3.44. What does it indicate? Oxygen has got more electronegativity. More electronegativity means it can pull the electrons towards itself because electronegativity is high. Now, in this carbonyl bond, you can see one bond is made up of sigma, and the one is of pi bond. I explained already pi bond is a weak bond, and the electrons are loosely held. So, because of oxygen electronegativity, these pi electrons are pulled towards this oxygen. Now, why pi, only pi are pulled? Because they are loosely held. Take the case of carbon and oxygen bond in case of alcohols. Here also you have electronegativity differences are there, but this is not polar. Why? The bond is sigma bond and the electrons are held strongly. Though oxygen has got more electronegativity, it cannot pull the electrons. Only pi electrons which are loosely held can be pulled to this oxygen. Now, what happens with this? Because oxygens are moving, because electrons are moving closer to oxygen, electrons has got a negative charge and oxygen head will have a partial negative charge. Because electrons are moving away from carbon, carbon will have a partial positive charge. This is what is generation of dipole. That, that is the reason why it is known as polar bond. Polarity is because of differences in electronegativity. Now, look at this carbon. What has happened with this? This carbon is a kind of partial positive charge. Now, there is a concept called as electrophilic carbon. This carbon is known as electrophilic carbon. Understand this word electrophile. Electra means electrons which are nothing but negatively charged. File means like. You know there is a word called phobia. Phobia means fear. Philia means likeness. So electrophile means a species which likes electrons. Now the general principle in chemistry is opposite charges will get attracted. Now, the positive charge is attracted to negative charge. Because the carbon has got a positive charge, it is attracted towards a negative charge. That is what is technically known as electrophile, electron liking. So, all carbonyls, the carbon is a electrophilic center. Remember this, because of polarity and differences in electronegativity, the carbonyl compounds, carbon becomes an electrophilic center. Now, another term, nucleophile. Again, understand this word. What is a nucleophile is? Nucleo means nucleus. What do you have inside a nucleus? Inside a nucleus, you have protons and neutrons. Neutrons, there won't be any charge. But protons, there is a positive charge. File means like. That means this species likes a positive charge. This is indicated as NU with negative things. And electrophiles are indicated as E+. Plus. Now, this nucleophile, as the name indicates, it gets attracted towards a positive charge. So, what contains a positive charge? This electrophile. So, always in chemistry, there is a re reaction between an electrophile and nucleophile because of this positive-negative attraction. So, in carbonyls, if the carbon is an electrophilic center, it is attacked by a nucleophile. Remember this concept. In entire carbonyl chemistry, this is what is matters the most. If you understand why nucleophile is attacking, most of the mechanism will be easy to master. So, this is about electrophile and nucleophile. Now, next thing. See, the carbonyl component is present in many functional groups. See, this is what is a carbonyl component is. Now, these are aldehydes. R indicates a radical. Radical could be anything. It could be alkyl, aryl or hydrogen 2. 
it is generically given as r now aldehydes has got one r group and a hydrogen whereas ketones both of them are r groups or radicals carboxylic acid hydroxy group will be there if the hydrogen is replaced with an r group it becomes ester n hydrates are derivatives of carboxylic acid n means without hydra means water in from two molecules of carboxylic acid if you remove water we get n hydrates now acyl halides this group is known as acyl group r could be anything alkyl or aryl to that if chloride is attached it becomes acyl chloride halide is a generic term which applies to fluorine chlorine bromine iodine etc our amides a carbonyl is attached with amine group these are important in case of proteins proteins are made up of amino acids amino acids bond together with amide bond so these are all the various carbonyl presence in many functional groups now coming to the next one now see this carbonyl groups are thermodynamically stable in the previous slide what i have told you i told you that carbon is an electrophilic center because of its positive charge it tends to move towards electrons or negative charge this electrophilic center is attacked by a nucleophile nucleophile means a species which moves closer towards positive charge now when this nucleophile goes and attacks this carbon this pi electrons move towards oxygen then it forms this kind of intermediate this is called tetrahedral intermediate tetra means four carbon is again bonded with four bonds hence it is known as tetrahedral if you see the change sp2 hybrid carbon is changing to sp3 hybrid carbon now get into the topic thermodynamically stable carbonyl group is thermodynamically stable therma means heat dynamic means movement it means heat movement whenever there there is a reaction takes place heat the energy will move thermodynamically stable means heat movement is not occurring that means the molecule is a stable one no heat movement occurs this carbonyl groups are considered as thermodynamically stable now you need to understand why this happens in fact when you see the hybridization you have sp sp2 hybridization and sp3 hybridization is there sp hybridized orbitals are more stable than sp2 sp2 in turn is more stable than sp3 why why this happens now understand this in sp hybridization s orbital and p orbital are equally combining to give hybrid orbitals so 50% of s character and 50% of p character now you know all of you know that s is the shape whereas p is the shape now s orbital electrons are closer to nucleus whereas p orbital are little further away from nucleus what is the impact of this what do you have in nucleus in nucleus you have protons which are positively charged now what do you have in this orbitals you have electrons which are negatively charged when the orbital is closer to nucleus the attraction forces will be close and the electrons are tightly held that means if you increase s character the electrons are tightly held and the bond will be strong and stable so the moment you decrease s character in this it is only 33% whereas here it is only 25%. So the moment you are reducing s character you are moving farther away from nucleus and the attraction decreases. So sp3 is less stable than sp2. Now in case of this look at here what is happening. When this sp2 is converting into tetrahedral one you are moving from sp2 to sp3. Hence this has got more s character so this one is thermodynamically more stable that is the reason why this reaction is shown as reversible when there is a chance this tetrahedral will get converted back to sp2 when when you use a strong nucleophile then only it goes binds here and attaches like this this is a kind of addition reaction what is getting attached here a nucleophile is getting attached here so this is called as nucleophilic addition remember this this happens only with strong nucleophile why because carbonyl is a stable one you need a very strong nucleophile species to cause this nucleophilic addition the other thing see the other one is known as nucleophilic acyl substitution now if you have a group which can come back after nucleophilic addition the nucleophile will go and attach retains this carbonyl group and a substitution occurs observe this reaction initially you have a carbonyl group a nucleophile comes and attaches and one of the group in this carbonyl is knocked out and this nucleophile is substituted retaining carbonyl what did i told you before Nuc 
a carbonyl group is thermodynamically stable. So this reaction retains that stable carbonyl group by substitution. And this is a kind of substitution reaction. Now see what is substituting this group is called as acyl group. To this acyl group a nucleophile is getting substituted hence this is known as nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. So these are all the two major pathways which occur on carbonyl group. One is nucleophilic addition and the other one is nucleophilic acyl substitution. In the next class we will see the detailed mechanisms of the both the pathways. Thank you for watching this video.